Making money as a student is tough. Every single day you have eight hours of classes followed by a few hours of extracurriculars. Then you have to come home, eat dinner, shower, and then study for the rest of the night. The average student doesn't have room for a part-time job to make some extra money, which is exactly where side hustles come in. In this video, I'm gonna break down three side hustles I did back when I was a student. The first side hustle is content creation. So back when I was 12 years old, I made my first YouTube channel. And to be honest, I wasn't trying to make money. I was just having the time of my life uploading Minecraft videos to YouTube. But after a while, my account became eligible for monetization, and I realized I could actually make money uploading gaming videos to the internet. Immediately, I went up to my parents, had them set up AdSense, and soon enough, my channel was making like 10 to $20 per day, which wasn't bad for a teenager. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Go hard, this sounds great and all, but what am I gonna make videos about? I have two suggestions. First, if you have a hobby, whether it's gaming, coding, cubing, gardening, lifting, or whatever it is, share your passion on social media. Post walkthroughs, tutorials, or even vlogs showing people the ups and downs of your journey. All right, and my second idea, if you're interested in a certain academic subject, whether it's computer science or organic chemistry, post tutorials to YouTube. Now, if you're uncomfortable putting your face out there or simply don't know how to edit, that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, NVIDIA AI. And video AI introduces a very cool way of turning your ideas into videos. All you have to do is type your idea into a box and this tool will automatically generate a video with voiceovers, clips, and more. So let's go ahead and see this tool in action. So once you head to NVIDIA's website, click on sign up and you'll see a page like this where you can create your account. Once you log in, you'll see the following page, and this is where the magic happens. This tool is very similar to ChatGPT or Bard. You simply type in detailed instructions and it'll generate the exact kind of video that you're looking for. Now I know this might be a little bit intimidating. You might be sitting here wondering to yourself, what in the world do I type into this box? Well, lucky for you, NVIDIA AI provides workflows which can help you construct your prompts. We have a couple options here. We have YouTube Shorts, YouTube Explainer, Recent Events Video, and Script to Video. I'm gonna go ahead and click on YouTube Explainer. And let's go ahead and generate a video about photosynthesis. And there we go, I've also told it to describe in detail the different organelles and processes involved. And we can also add some creative directions. So I'll go ahead and tell the AI to make the video a little bit humorous and entertaining. As for the background music, I'll go ahead and tell it to choose something more upbeat. Now here you can select the gender and the accent for your narrator's voice. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave these as any. I'll go ahead and tell it to use subtitles. I'll leave watermark text as is, and we can use iStock normally. Now let's go ahead and press continue. And as you can see, the tool automatically constructed a prompt and placed it into the text box. Now all we have to do is go ahead and click on generate a video. All right, and here we go. The tool is working its magic. Now this part usually takes a few minutes, but it's still pretty quick. All right, and it's finished generating the video. The title is Photosynthesis, The Green Factory Unveiled. Let's go ahead and play the preview. Ever wondered why plants don't need a grocery store to get their food? Plants have mastered the process of photosynthesis, an amazing mechanism where they use sunlight and carbon dioxide to create their own food. So as you can see, it's pretty decent for an AI-generated video, and the voiceover sounds really natural. But if there are some parts of the video that you want to modify, it's super easy to make edits. All you have to do is click on this edit button, and then you can either edit the clips or the script. For example, if I click on this video clip, I can modify the duration, and I can also see the exact part of the script it corresponds to. Now, if we go to the edit script tab, this is where I can modify parts of the script. For example, here, maybe I wanna make this line more concise, so I can go ahead and remove these words, and there we go. You can also modify the clip for this line by clicking on this button and editing the media keywords. All right, so once you're happy with your modifications, go ahead and click on apply changes. And there we go, the tool is now modifying the script. Now, if you feel like that edit window was a bit too complicated, there is an even easier way to modify the video. There's this little prompt box right over here. You can type in a command and just tell it what to do. So for example, right here, there's an option for make this scene half as long, it's too wordy. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in, click on generate, and let's see what it does. All right, cool, and I shortened the first scene. As we can see, the timestamp went down from like 420 to 404. And you can use a bunch of other commands as well, like change the voiceover from male to female, or make the subtitles appear word by word and pop. Now, once you're happy with the result, you can go ahead and click on export, and we have a couple options here. We can remove the watermarks, we can remove the NVIDIA AI branding, and we can also select an export resolution. 
Now, if you wanna remove the watermark and export in high quality, I recommend you upgrade to a paid plan, which starts for as little as $20 a month. On top of that, the paid plan will give you access to millions of royalty-free stock footage clips, along with a more human-like voiceover. Check out the link in my description or in the comments to get started with NVIDIA AI. All right, now once again, huge thank you to NVIDIA AI for sponsoring this video, but now let's move on to the second side hustle, tutoring. So back in college, I became a computer science tutor for nearly a year. I had three students I was meeting with over Zoom, each for an hour a week, and honestly, it was pretty manageable with all of my coursework. Now, if you want to get started with tutoring, there are a couple steps that you have to follow. The first of which is figuring out what you even want to tutor in the first place. Do you want to tutor an academic subject like algebra, biology, or history? Or do you want to tutor a standardized test like the SAT or the ACT? Now there is a slight trade-off here. You'll probably make more money tutoring a standardized test, but it's also harder to do that. The people who are looking for standardized test tutors usually want someone who has scored above a 1500 on the SAT or a 33 on the ACT. On the other hand, if you wanna become an academic subject tutor, most people just want someone who aced the class. Now, if you wanna tutor in person, you can generally charge more, but of course you'll have to arrange your own transportation and coordinate meeting times with your students. Your marketing will also depend a lot on word of mouth and referrals. Now, if you wanna tutor online, you'll generally earn less, but it's a lot more more convenient. You don't have to worry about transportation, and you might not have to worry about marketing if you work for a larger tutoring company. But just keep in mind that these companies might take a slight cut of your earnings as they're bringing the students to you. Alternatively, you could start your own tutoring business and use social media to promote it. Either way, whether you're just tutoring one or two students or start a whole tutoring business, it's a pretty fun and rewarding way to earn some money. Now the third side hustle is web development. And the reality is you don't even need to know how to code. Now back in high school, I set up and managed a website for an organization in my community. And they didn't want me to code anything from scratch. They just needed someone who could use a platform like Wix and set up a couple web pages. And if you're young and tech savvy, that's not a super hard thing to do. The reality is there are probably tons of people, businesses, and organizations in your local community who want someone to help them set up a super simple website. So if this sounds even somewhat interesting to you, here's what I recommend you do. Reach out to local businesses and organizations and see if they need help upgrading or setting up a website. Now, if you're too nervous to send cold emails to businesses or if they're just not responding, you can also ask your parents, teachers, or even your guidance counselors. See if they can point you to anyone who might need help. And the best part about this side hustle is that you can take it even further. If you end up helping a local business with their website, you can also end up helping them with their social media, with their copywriting, with their graphic design. Of course, this will all depend on how much time you have and your exact expertise level, but if there are any older businesses in your area, I'm sure at least a few of them would appreciate a nicer website. If you're just getting started, I recommend you charge per project. And if you're using a website builder to set up a couple web pages, maybe you can charge anywhere between $100 to $200. Now, of course, if you know how to code and design and are programming the website from scratch, you can probably charge something in the thousands. But for most students, I think something simple and sweet is the way to go. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. Hopefully it helped out. And if it did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.